Now that we've implemented our workflow, it is time to test it. First, we're going to send individual files and watch them get ETL'd into the database. Then we're going to try a scheduled send and make sure that multiple files are coming across well too. And finally, we will review the adequate database statistics, which was one of the goals of our exercise today. I've already set up a site here uh, that connects uh, to uh, the ServeU server. It just happens to be running on localhost on my particular machine. It uses SSH to connect. Uh, uses an unusual port here. That's just uh, that's just uh, my particular uh, case in this. It's using an existing user ID and server and serve you uh, with a specific password. So we're just going to go ahead and get connect here, and it'll connect uh, using SFTP. Now, as you can see, we have many original station data files to pick from here. We can pick one at random, move it over. goes right onto the server, but if I do a refresh on that particular directory, you'll see that it's immediately taken away. And again, if I look at the inbound station data, there's nothing there either because it's already been processed from ServeView's point of view. I can find a trace of it in the archive station data, which it was just created. And I should, if I go into my database, also find traces of it here. And in fact, it did import 103 rows. And finally, to make sure that it came through and it went OK, we can check the log file that we were writing out with the import gas transaction to database batch file. What we see in here is that uh, the parameters we expected came in, um, that the ETL operation worked. It read 108 lines total. It processed 103 of them, inserted 103 of them successfully, while ignoring three header and footer lines and two comment lines. And then we can also see in this particular log that the uh, zip operation and the move operation also succeeded. Now that we've run a successful test of one file, let's go ahead and run a scheduled task. And this will move many files over. So I'm going to start again at the database here, just clear it out, make sure we're starting with nothing again. Make sure it's absolutely clear. It is. We're going to take a look at the FTP Voyager scheduler. Let me clear out the log here. We have a scheduled task here called Pump Transaction Drop Off. If we take a look at the task, we see that I've set a schedule for it to run every night at about 1 a.m. It's a daily task. Uh, as you can see, one of the nice things about this particular interface is that there are no scripts in action. Everything here is a click and point interface. This particular script is going to execute whatever is in this list of actions over here. And so this list of actions is configured to upload from this location, so all the original station files from station 001, and put them into the root directory on the remote server, which again, because this user is locked, to the remote server on ServeU is the only thing that'll happen. To initiate this um, at a non-scheduled time, right now, we can always hit start. And the results of the transfer will begin to write themselves into the log below here, as well as um, an overall status that we see at the right-hand side here. Now, if we flip over to the inbound station data, we can see some of these files starting to come in. And we'll just sit here for a moment here. You'll see it refresh. The dates here increase as each file is brought in, um, ETL'd, and archived. We 
can also watch this from the perspective of the archived station data. And as each one of these files is archived, you'll see that these files neatly show up inside of the station data here. So let a few more days trickle in here. Maybe you let it go all the way up to October um, 5th or so. That'll look good. There's 90 files in here. So rather than let this run, I'm going to cancel this task. Archive data completed its run. Again, make sure the inbound is clear. Everything seems to be working right. It went all the way through October 7th, according to the archive station data. So again, I can go back into my database here. Let's see how many entries were added. Uh, we got up to 2,241. Now what we can do, now that everything is in the database, is we can also execute a query or two uh, to provide our statistics at the end. So let me bounce back to a list of some uh, queries that we might want to use on a statistics database. This looks a little messy, but it'll look better when I copy it into. So if we're looking at this from the point of view of somebody trying to get business statistics out of here, uh, because we were able to import about a month of data, we can take a look here and find that um, in, in that in that month span, um, the average charge that we assessed people was $48, minimum charge $26.06, and maximum charge $122. How many sales of each type of fuel took place in that time period? Again, regular um, more than anything else. Then we can take a look at what was charged per day and what were the daily gas prices uh, for the entire time. We can also break that out by diesel fuel separately. We can also take a look at uh, purchases by hour and find out which hours are busy. And again, as you might expect, uh, morning, uh, noon, and the afternoon rush are the busiest times of the day for these particular gas stations. You may have noticed as we went through the implementation and testing steps that there were many interesting options hiding in the margins. And indeed, there are a couple other things that you may want to do to extend the workflow in this particular example. For example, using this technology, you could also have deleted files from the gas station computers after sending them. You could also have emailed every station owner or headquarters when daily transactions were or were not delivered. And finally, you could have kicked off an engine to draw and deliver reports and graphs, or even have those delivered um, back to the original senders. In summary, or if you're just joining us here at the end, we just went through a business case, a look at resources, a workflow phase, implementation phase, testing, and some possible extensions of an integrated workflow involving Servio and FTP Voyager. It's a quick process, it's a simple process, and it's one that controlled the costs in this example. I hope you enjoyed this integration spotlight and will join us again. Please visit us on the web or on Twitter. Again, we are File Transfer Consulting. You can visit us at filetransferconsulting.com or see us on Twitter at FT Experts. Thank you.